Now let's discuss about the entrance pressure drop. So entrance pressure drop consider two point. The pressure drop due to the flow area change. The core entrance drop consists of two contribution. First is due to the flow area change, sudden contraction and the pressure associated with the free expansion for follow sudden contraction. Okay. So there is two reason for the pressure drop at the entry because the flow area is going to change and second one is due to the sudden contraction. Okay. To evaluate the core entrance losses, it will be assumed that the temperature change at the entrance is small and that the fluid velocity is small compared to the velocity of the sound. So as we consider the temperature is not going to change, the it is considered to be incompressible. So the density will remain same. So according to first, the pressure drop at the entrance due to the area change alone for a frictionless incompressible flow, if we apply Bernoulli's equation, we will get we know that applying Bernoulli's equation where uh, elevation is the same for the same horizontal pipe and for the same cross sectional area we will get this P1 minus P2 dash. Suppose this P2 dash is a uh, imaginary point at the entrance. So P1 minus P2 dash is equal to rho u square by 2g, uh, rho u2 square by 2g upon rho u1 square by 2g. So taking rho as a common because density is not going to change which is same as rho 1 or rho 2 or we can say the density at the inlet. So rho i is equal to u2 square by 2g minus u1 square by 2g. Simplifying it becomes rho i u2 square upon 2gc 1 minus u1 by u2 square. Now introducing one term which is a sigma which is a ratio of minimum flow, uh, free flow area to the frontal area. The ratio of minimum free flow area to the frontal area is known as the sigma and g is the core mass velocity as we have already discussed about the flux velocity or core mass velocity. So sigma is a new term which is a ratio of minimum area available to the frontal area which is denoted by sigma. So for in our figure we can see that in our figure uh, yes this is our figure. So for our figure this is the maximum available area, this is the minimum area. So minimum area divided by frontal area. So A2 by A1 or we can say that the A4 by A3. Okay. So as per our figure, yes, the minimum free flow area is A2 and frontal area is A1 at this side. At right hand side it is A3 by A4 because A4 is a frontal area and A3 is a minimum free flow area at the core exit and we know that the mass flux velocity g which is m dot by a2 or we can say that rho i into u2 velocity u2 at the core entrance okay. Now <coughs> putting this equation and we know that the continue from the continuity equation density into area into velocity at the u1 at the point 1 free flow and at the a, uh, entrance point rho i a o a2 and u2 okay. So using these three equation in this simplified form of our equation, we know that this u1 by u2 from this equation u1 by u2 is equal to a2 by a1 and a2 instead of a2 by a1 I can write sigma. So instead of this u1 by u2 I can write sigma. So u1 by u2 square it is a sigma square. So our equation will simplify in this form that p1 minus p2 dash is equal to g square upon 2gc into rho i because this rho i into u2 I can write instead of g. So this is multiplying and dividing by rho i. So we will get rho i square u2 square which becomes a g square and divide by rho i which is 1 minus here 1 minus sigma square replacing u1 by u2 by sigma. Now second pressure drop due to associated with the free expansion that is follows by sudden contraction. So at the entrance there is a sudden contraction at the core entrance. So pressure drop due to this losses taken into account by contraction loss coefficient. This is a, we have to introduce contraction loss coefficient which is multiplied by the dynamic velocity head at the core inlet. So pressure drop due to this sudden contraction is equal to this coefficient is coefficient of contraction, contraction loss coefficient which is Kc multiplied by dynamic velocity head. This is the dynamic velocity head at the core inlet which is density at the inlet so that the rho i core inlet velocity so that the u2 square divided by 2g 
this is the dynamic velocity head multiplied by the contraction coefficient which gives a pressure loss due to the sudden contraction. Simplifying this, we will get Kc g square by 2gc into rho i. So, the pay, total pressure drop is the pressure drop due to the change in flow area and pressure drop due to the sudden contraction. Adding these two equations with each other, we will get this g square by 2gc upon rho i will be common. So, in bracket, it would be 1 minus sigma square plus Kc, coefficient of sudden contraction. Okay. So, this is the pressure drop at the core inlet. Now, let us find out the pressure drop at the core exit. So, at the core exit, just opposite of the core inlet, the flow area is going to be changed and the sudden expansion. So, first pressure rise due to the flow area change, which is same as the previous equation. We can uh, write g square by 2gc upon rho a into 1 minus rho square due to flow area change. Now, second due to the sudden expansion, so same as the previous equation, here we, we are going to use coefficient of expansion. In previous equation, there is a coefficient of contraction, here we are going to use coefficient of expansion with this flow velocity head at the exit, which is density becomes rho 3. In previous equation, the density is rho i, inlet velocity at the core. <coughs> here you can write rho o also. Uh, density at the exit or density at the outlet. U3 velocity at the exit point and this is upon 2gc. So, our equation becomes Ke g square by 2gc into rho. So, the total pressure load at the exit is due to the both effect due to the flow change flow area and due to the sudden expansion. So, final equation becomes g square by 2gc into rho in bracket 1 minus rho square minus Ke. So, the total pressure drop due to the entrance effect which is delta P122 at the core, delta P223 pressure rise at the exit due to the sudden expansion and change in flow area. So, the final equation is this which we have used in a compact heat exchanger. So, this is the proof of the how this equation is generated. Generally, this equation is not uh, asked in, a, in any exam or in any paper, but as a student. Uh, we should know how this how this expression is derived. So, this first term is due to the entrance effect, this is momentum effect and this is core friction. This is the center portion uh, or we can say that the pressure drop at the core which uh, plays major role in this total equation and this is the due to the exit effect. Now, we can simplify this equation more. Instead of Rh, we can uh, here instead of Rh, we can write Ao by perimeter. So, simplifying again, instead of Rh, I have written A minimum divided by perimeter. So, now we will get this A by A mean F, uh, the 1 minus rho square plus k square plus 2 rho i by rho minus 1 as it is, this F remain as it is. This is uh, because P into L, if this is instead of P into L, I can write area perimeter into length. So, the area for the flow total flow area we can say that uh, rho i by rho as it is. This is a simplified form. You can you also use previous equation. So, this is the equation which we have used in a numerical of compact heat extender. Now, this is equation for the plate fin heat extender. Now, from this equation, we can derive the equation for the tube fin heat extender also. What we have to do is in a tube fin, there is no contraction and expansion suppose. So, instead of this Kc and Ke, we can put 0. So, what happen if we put 0 instead of Kc in Ke? Suppose Kc, instead of Kc, I have put 0. Instead of Ke, there is a 0. Simplifying this equation, opening the bracket, we will get 1 minus sigma square plus 2 rho i by rho minus 2 plus F A upon A mean rho i by rho as it is minus rho i by rho plus sigma square rho i by rho. Okay. Now, this is 2 rho i by rho and this is rho i by rho. So, this becomes rho i by rho o. This is plus 1, this is minus 2. So, it is minus 1. So, simplifying this equation, we will get this equation. Now, rho i upon rho o from this term and this is rho i upon rho common. So, we will get rho i upon rho in bracket 1 plus sigma square. And this is minus 1 minus sigma square. So, minus 1 common. So, that sigma square plus 1. Now, simplifying this two term, we will get 
sigma square plus 1 will be common. So, in bracket rho i upon rho o minus 1, this term will remain same. We have used this equation for the tube fin heat exchanger. So, this is the proof that how this equation is derived. So, in this lecture, we have studied how the pressure drop equation for the plate fin heat exchanger and the tube fin heat exchanger is derived. There is a no need to remember all these steps, but the final step, the equation of the pressure drop for the plate fin and the tube fin is most important and are used for so many, uh, so many times to solve the, to, to calculate the pressure drop in a plate fin and a tube fin heat exchanger. So, uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much. Thank you.